I've got a chat bar over here. <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting stuff. All right. So we are working on learning HTML right now. We are learning from Free Code Camp basics. I have Visual Studio Code open up right here. You can see all this. Visual Studio, the app. We're going to copy it. Actually, yeah, so I'm going to start from the beginning. We're going to copy. Am I going to copy it? I don't know. Um, we're going to start at the very beginning. If I was doing this from nothing. So we're going to delete this. Yeah, move to trash. We're going to go to settings. All right, we have nothing. But we can go to, we're in a folder. So if we start with absolutely nothing, I'm trying to get back to complete zero. As if I had just opened up like that. There we go. Visual Studio Code for the first time. Here we go. And we hit, I'm going to hit open. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I have on my computer a folder for what we're doing today. Not a learning, not a streaming. And then here we go. I've got a folder ready set up for this today's stream. And hit open. And I called it 001 HTML. And right here you see that folder. That's it. I don't really know what outline and timeline are. We'll figure that out at some point. In here, we're going to make a new file. We're going to click new. And it's going to say, what? Select the type? I think we're making an HTML. So we're going to type HTML. And then I'm going to hit enter. And there it says. And we're following along in Free Code Camp, and it's a cat photo app. Now, here's the first thing I've learned in the uh, coding world is that spaces aren't needed. You just capitalize new words, or so I've been told. And I will continue to, to do this until otherwise told not to. If someone's there, please tell me not to. That's fine. We create the file. There's nothing in here now. Okay. And I should be able to do this from memory now, but so we're going to do these codes. I'm going to talk about each of these things as I do them. I believe this HTML tag starts off and says this file is going to be HTML. So whenever a web browser reads this file, it says you're going to read it in the language of HTML, hypertext markup language html and then this is going to be the body which is a section of the page we're giving it a name and we're saying inside of the body we're going to put all these things and we're going to put a main section oh what am i done And inside of that main, we're going to put an H1, which is a heading one. And it's going to be cat photo app. No spaces. Look at that. All right. H1, heading one. What does heading mean? Why do we have the word heading? Who cares about a heading? It is uh, the size of the font. This is a, you have H1 through H6 normally. You got H1 here, H2, you got some H3s. You go look over here, H1 looks like this, H1. H2 is just cat photos, a little bit smaller, heading two. And then H3, things cats love, 
things cats love h3 so on this page we have one h1 one heading one title and this is how all web pages are supposed to be only one h1 thing on a page at a time you can have lots of h2s bazillion h3s and an unlimited number of p p stands for paragraph this is just a generic set of text and i'll show you about that in just a second but the reason why you only have one h1 is for things like google that search the internet and they see h1s and they think that's what that page is about it's about a cat photo app so it will tell people on google if you want to see cat photo this is the page now if you have everything at h1 it'll think cat photo app cat photo cat list top three things cats hate if you did all of these things as h1s the google would be confused and it would not pull your web page to the google search engine as easily that's what i've been told please correct me if i'm wrong all right so from here we're going to make a section inside of the main section that's right we're just making sections and spaces and areas and we'll tell you about what they mean here in a bit so here's a section and inside the section we're going to do that other smaller heading cat photos with an h2 h2 oh do i need to do that ah that'll work for now cat photo Oop. capital p cat photos and i've got this extra h2 thing here i need to get rid of all right so I'm just coming down the line here, showing you what's going on. This green thing, it's gonna show up as a different color over here. As I'm typing it, can you think what it means? Can you guess what it means? To do, add link to cat photos. Now, if you'll notice, this does not show up over here. It didn't say to do. Is it hidden? What's going on? What's happening? This special little mark right here means this is a comment inside of the code. A note. This is just an extra note so people who are reading the code can see an explanation usually or a to-do list, or a, a bug to fix, or just some information. So these comments do not show up on the web page. We have the less than exclamation point dash dash. That tells the web page this will not be shown. This is a comment. And at this point, it says this is the end. One thing I need to tell you. Um, you're coming along on this for learning for the first time these are all opening tags of elements this is an element this is an element this is an element an h1 element the header one element this is the opening tag and this with the forward slash h1 is the closing tag this section has an open and close, and you can see it here. So it shows it. Can I do it over here? Does it also work? It does. The section element represents a generic section of a document. Look at this. It's got information for us. Let's see what body says. Nothing. HTML. The HTML element represents the root of an HTML document. All right. The body element represents the content of the document. This is where everything in the HTML document goes. You might put things above the body that will affect the body, but this is where all of the words and pictures and what will be shown on screen goes. The main element is represents the main content of the body or document or application. And then H1. It represents a section heading, H2, another section heading, and this, will it show us what a comment is? It does not. 
All right, so we've got a comment. We've got opening and closing tags all over the place. Look at these. Close it. If you want to close something, you just repeat the opening one with a forward slash most of the time. There is an exception coming up very soon. All right, we got paragraph P. P. We're opening up. We're putting a paragraph tag, an opening tag, to write information just in regular text. Paragraph means it's the normal, regular text. But here we go. We've got some special stuff coming up. A. This stands for anchor tag. Target is, so anchor will be, let's see what it says specifically what an anchor is. If the element has an href attribute, then it represents a hyperlink. That's not what I want. I want that. Oh, here we go. If the element has an href attribute, oh, that's what it says. An hypertext anchor labeled by its contents. Now, let's, let's dig into this. What is a anchor tag? An anchor tag HTML is used to create a hyperlink on a web page. So this is be something that you can click to go somewhere else. It goes to other web pages or other spots on that same page. We might use that here in a minute to go to a the bottom of the page, the top of the page. It might be a target to go back up to the top. So let's go back to our cat app. Let's see here. A. And then we're writing the word target. So this target. Oh, here we go. Here are the different versions of target. Specifies where to display the link. So you're going to, the A says, this is going to be a link. You click on it, you go somewhere. The target says, where is it going? Is it going to be self? Is it going to load right there and replace the page that you're on? Or is it going to open up blank into a new tab? A new thing. Parent, what does this one do? Let's try them out. So we're going to do target equals. And there they are. There's the four. Blank, parent, self, top. We'll do blank, underscore blank. And then we need to finish this. Oh, see, we have it over here on our, our thing. With an href, which I'm going to write out the href part. I'm going to copy paste the, the link. Because I'm trying to get used to, this is the whole purpose of this, is to get in reps on typing out the code. I don't, But I don't care about typing out URLs that already exist. I've had plenty of typing practice. I'm just trying to get the actual uh, code syntax in my brain. All right, so there's another quotation. And then we're going to close this href. So what's href mean? Href is just the URL, where it's going. But it could even be on the same page. All right, now see here? A. Now this is a crazy one. So this is the opening tag, H2, right there. This is the closing tag. All the stuff in the middle is called a string, I believe. Well, I think it's called. Um, hold on a second. We're going to use ChatGPT to explain something to us. Between a an opening tag and a closing tag in HTML, what is the text called? Example of H like this. Actually, we'll just copy it. Copy. Paste. The text between opening tag and closing tag is called content or inner content of the element. In the example provided, cat photos, the content is called cat is cat photos. All right, so 
I wonder if you can see where the content is for this. There's sets of content and subsets. So in the paragraph opening, P, see more is content. And if you ignore all of this, including the A, and then we print that out, here we'll do it. X. We'll just make a paragraph. It says see more. And here we go. We're going to. Now, how do I show this? I'm going to run this. I want to see my app. Or not my app. I guess my web page. How would I see it? Well, let's see here. We're going to go to settings. And more settings. Here we go. Commonly used. Let's search. We're gonna we're trying to run this in a browser, which I always thought sounded like Bowser from Mario Brothers. Alright. I have a thing called Live Server and it's set up to come into Firefox. Which is fine and good. So if you want live server, go find this live server by Ritwick Day. Um, I assume it's updated. I don't know how to update on VS Code, but it's installed. I don't remember if I had to do anything special to make it work. I think it just works. I'm not sure. But so I'm gonna close that. Close my settings. Close all of these extensions. This is where the extensions are in the little blocks. Extensions. I'm going to leave the uh, Explorer there. I just like it having it there. I don't know why. All right, but I do want to see this. I want to see this run. And I have a go live button. There's probably another way to do it. Can I just hit run? Run without debugging. Run in debugger. Can I do it in Firefox? No, it doesn't work. Install an extension for HTML. Can I run it in this? What's this? HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Playground. Is this very good? Almost a million downloads. Four only has seven reviews. Hmm. I could also just use Microsoft Edge tools for VS Code. What does this do? Live analysis. Does it do it in CS code? Show me this image. Does that run Edge inside of VS Code? A browser preview built in. Right here. Browser preview built in with toolbar and. I like it. Install. Okay. Run. Without debugging, I just did it. I did a thing. Settings. Install copy. Python three command requires. Oh dear. Would you like to install the? I think so. Here we go. What is this command line tools? This looks official. I'm going to pause the stream for a minute. Um, there we go. Pause that and then the audio. I can mute it somehow. Is there not an easy way to mute?
Well, we're back, but it's not any different. Sorry about that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning. So, I ended up running the uh, same thing as before. Running it live. Go live. And that goes over here and runs it in here. And it is not functioning. Oh no. Let's see if we can fix it by making it dot HTML. HTML. Enter. That does not fix it. JSON. I don't want this. But this. What is all this? Delete. Will it run now? Hmm. Go live. Aha! Got it. Here we go. We're cooking with Crisco. All right, here we go. Well, so I have not learned too much. All I know is that this live server function is really useful. Um, down here, if you, hey, what's this? Microsoft Edge tool. Maybe it's working now. I don't know. So if you go to the extensions, install this. I don't remember if I had to do anything special with this or not. I don't feel like I did. I think I just, yeah, open a project, hit go live. I think that's it. In case you don't have HTML, if you don't have a .html, it won't work, I don't think. So that's what I did. All right, we can go to that. Here we go. Why does that look like it's uh, misspelled? Oh, do it for me then. I don't know. Cancel. You want to do a thing for me? Then do it. If not, let it be. Yeah, I normally see this. Um, on lots of HTMLs. All right. Here we go. Cat photos. Where were we? Cat photos. H2. Comment. Paragraph. Paragraph. This is where we were. Opening tag. Closing tag. See more. See more. There. And then we're going to have cat photos. If you look at all this, you can ignore all that blue and just see more cat photos in our gallery. In fact, everything there a to a that is its own special thing inside of the see more in our gallery it is saying that we're gonna have see more it's gonna be regular text and our gallery will be regular text but we're putting a special anchor and making the letters and words cat photos if you click on it it'll be a link that's what this A is doing, a hypertext link. We're anchoring it to somewhere else. You click it, it goes, it takes you off. Like it's pulling you out like one of those parachute pull things from movies and stuff. And I'm not sure they're real life, but I imagine I see in the movies where they're like a fighter jet flies by and there's a rope that pulls you out. This is that fighter jet. You click it and it pulls you and takes you to the other location and then, but a does not know where it's going. A just says, start pulling, they're gonna go. And then, and this is kind of a, oh, this is, this is an analogy. Let's go, let's keep this analogy going. Let's see if we can get it to go. href is where we're going, uh, meaning the exact location. And I would say that blank, target blank, would be kind of like um, 
the area region like if, if if this was a helicopter metaphor and we got and you clicked on it and you got pulled out it's like all right you're being pulled and you're going to New Mexico well let's say the Grand Canyon let's say this is the Grand Canyon this link says you're gonna go there this would be uh, Arizona right the Grand Canyon's in Arizona I believe um, brain so this would be the big region that you go to and this would be the location the exact location it's kind of it's not the best metaphor because the blank we're gonna test it out let's see a all right we're starting a link we're gonna make it go to underscore blank that's where it's gonna go we're gonna go land on a new page and it's gonna but take us to this exact nah it's not a good metaphor oh well we'll work on it actually let's just go somewhere um, let's go to Google www.google.com quotations now if you'll notice the P this opening tag has a little as a less than and a greater than here's the a here's the less than we need it somewhere along the line that's why this is red we need a greater than but are we gonna just put it right there at the end of the quotations it looks like we are So if we run this, I'm going to hit save right now, ready and save. I just saved it. If we run it, see more, what, 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 see more what? Uh, nothing is there. See more and then, but we have to tell it to show something. So in the A, this is the opening. That's the opening, just like this is an opening. Opening tag opening tag and these are called attributes they're telling it how to do the opening tag and where to go what to do this is the thing it's doing it's creating a link and this is how it's going to do the link or where it's going to do the link attributes but this is what it's going to show it's going to show see more google why not all right, we hit save. Let's see what happens. Go to goal. And it's linked. Look at that. You can see it. Now, if we got, we have target blank. Open a new tab. So, what are the other options here? Target uh, parent. Isn't that one of them? What's that do? I don't know. Oh, not enter. Oh, dear. I hit enter. Hit save. Okay, looks like I did that. What are the other options? Underscore, is it gonna be the thing anymore? Equals. How come it only... All right, here we go, self. Underscore self. What happens when we do that? Looks the same. Uh, turn this tab into Google. Is that what parent did also? Is that what I missed? Parent. Save. That's right. Same thing. Self and parent on this instance are the same. What else is there? So self loads the URL in the same browser context as the current one. That's the default behavior. So if I don't put target, it'll just do self. If I put blank, it'll open up in a new tab. If I put parent, it'll load the URL into the parent browsing context of the current one, which behaves in the same way as self, if there is no parent. Top, 
It'll load the URL into the top level browsing context. It's the highest browsing context. So it'll be the same as self if there's no other parents or. So really, it's just self or blank. I'm sure those will become more apparent later on. Uh, parent, that's funny. We'll keep it at blank. Open up a new tab. Okay. But we want to finish the sentence. See more Google at the Google place. Save. There we go. Now we're making sentences. And save. Oh, wrong one. And save. Period. There it is, a period. Great. So see more. And they have cat photos in our gallery. Did the same thing we did. We closed the link out from there to there. Link is all encapsulated in here. It's going to go to a new tab. And it's going to go to this. This is the location that's going to show up in the new tab. Tag. I guess in my mind, target is kind of like um, what kind of... Uh, I imagine a piece of paper. And it says... Do we want to remake the paper you're holding, or you get to have a separate piece of paper? Either way, what we're going to show you on that remade one or the new one is this link, this URL, this href. I don't know what that stands for. Hypertext reference, probably. That's my guess. All right. Separately, we have another href with an image. We're doing a link around an image. Let's have a look at this. Let's write this out. Let's go to the end. I'm hitting the end button on my keyboard. I'm hitting enter. We're going to start off with just, this is just going to be a link. This is just a link. All right. We're going to go somewhere. Where are we going? href equals, and we're going to go, let's go back to Google, I guess. I don't know. I don't care. HTTPS. Just want to make sure this works forward slash forward slash www.google.com all right we got that is that it is that all we need it is then we're going to tell what to put inside this link what's it gonna because in the last one we had cat photos inside the the a the anchor the link so it showed up as cat photos well it didn't sorry over here it does over here it says cat photos. Over he here it says Google. Let's have the link. Google. All caps. So what are we going to put inside this? We're going to put an image. You've always wanted to put images on the internet. Here's your time to shine. To pull an image from somewhere, you're going to say that we're going to put an image. IMG. Oops, sorry. And it's going to be an opening tag. Image. And we say, this is going to be an image, and that image will come from this source, SRC, source. And that source will equal a link. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on Google, and we're going to copy this link. Copy image for the Google. That's right. We're copying the Google link. So... Right there, that's the image. I copy pasted it. So here's the source is going to be coming from this thing. All right, I feel like I've got too much on the screen here. We can make this collapse. No more Explorer for now. Let's go to the home side. All right, we have A, which is the opening of a link. And it's going to take us to google.com. But what are we going to click? Are we going to click a word? Nope, we're going to click an image. And that image, we're going to pull that image from this URL out somewhere on the internet. This is the source of this image, is from this URL. Okay, now this is the end of it. We have quotations there. We need quotations here. All right. I'm looking at here. Oh, an alternate text. 
So because it's an image, inside of the image piece, all the way back to here, this opens it up. Image. We're still opening. Oh, if you'll notice, this is the special one. The rest of these have an open tag and a close tag. Open tag, close tag, open tag, which is huge, full of things, full of all sorts of attributes, and a close tag, open tag, close tag, but image does not. It's just an open tag. It's self-contained. Once you make the first little uh, alligator mouth, the second one that closes it, that closes it, ends it, I guess. That's it. That's all you need for the image. So what do we have? Over here in VS Code, we have open to the image, source. All right. And then here's where we're getting the image from. And then we close it. Is that it? No, we're going to make an alternate text. This is just, this is good practice for accessibility on the internet. So persons who cannot see, but the internet can be read. Um, and this is going to be Google logo. That's what it, the alternate text will say. If this image does not show up, this alternate text will say Google logo. And then we can close the image. And then I believe already we have a close on the A, the link. Let's have a look at it. And we're going to save this document. Google, there's the image. We pulled the image in. And we click on it. And since we did not set a target, it goes straight through on this tab. Let's try and set the target without looking at the HTML tutorial. All right, so before source, we're going to have, oh, wait, wait, no, no, not, not the image. We're going to go back to the reference. We're going to change the link attribute. This is where you're going, and this is the kind of the place you're landing, the type of place you're going to, type of place you're landing on. That's it. Here's the reference. So, yeah, let's say you're going to get, to uh, this location, but this is either going to be a new landing pad or the same one that you've always been on. That's right, landing pads. Okay. Target equals blank. A new landing pad. We want a new one. And let's hit save. And it should be updated now. Click on it. Yep, there it goes. A new tab opened. We did it. Hooray, hurrah, we're doing it. All right. So let's come back to here. Don't really need this navigator panel right now. Actually, what I don't need is this to be so wide. I can make this a little skinnier. Because I want to see more of this. That's fine. Next line. What do we have? A. That's it? Okay, now we've got section. And then we're going to make a new section. So after this section, let's make a new section. And I'm not exactly sure why we're doing this. This is part of the tutorial. Uh, maybe it will tell me later. I think if we can read the information correct, main, let's see where main ends. Main ends way down here. It includes everything. Section one includes all the way to the first slash section, forward slash section. And that is right after the cat laying on its back, before cat lists. See, here's cat lists, and here's section two. So this is section one. This is section two. Is there a section three? Section. Nope. Section two is just cat lists. All right, so let's go back to section two. The first section was cat photos. Now we're on cat lists. 
I'm going to try and look at just my end product over here and see if I can type out as a quiz to myself. Yeah, like that. I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to see if I can make this stuff exist by just typing in VS Code. All right, here we go. Cat list. That is an H2. So I'm going to put H2 cat lists. Hit end, enter. Okay. Now I'm going to do H3. H3. Will this work? It does work. Does it matter if it's capitalized? I don't know. We'll see. Now it's things, cats, love. Meow. Okay. End. All right. And now we have an unordered list of bullet points. There's no order to it. It's just blank dot dot dot. This one's one, two, three. So this is an unordered list. And I'll tell you right here, have a look at this, this unordered list. <sighs> unordered list is UL. So UL, unordered list. I am now telling HTML, we're going to make a list with bullet points with an unordered list. But now I need to tell it what to put in there. We're going to put items. All right. And those are list items, L, I. And we're going to put uh, food, lasers. Oh, wait. I have to do the L, I, don't I? L, I. I'm putting space. Should I put space? I put space earlier. I don't know if that's going to mess it up or not. And then another list item, list item lasagna. Why not? I don't know. I just I don't want to type all those things out. Enter. All right. Let's have a look at it. We're going to hit save. Let's go see the page. Yeah, we're doing it. So I got three things in a list. Three things in a list. Things cats love. OK. And then we have a picture. Oh, and then we have something special here. That I'm going to try to remember from memory. So we're going to go back down to the user list. And we're going to put an image. So we're going to use the IMG. And we're going to do source equals. And then we're going to go find an image. I'm going to copy this link. And then we're going to do paste. And then we're going to close it. Nope. Alt text equals lasagna. Now we're going to close the image. This is not a link. We do not need the A. This is just an image, just to sit there. Does nothing. This one can click on it. This one, no clicky. All right, so let's save. We have problems. What are these problems? Oh. Yeah, those problems aren't necessarily real problems for me right now. OK. Lasagna, we did it. We got lasagna. Now, this is a special thing, which I don't fully get why I'm learning it, but I think I'm just learning it just to get used to lots of random code things. So um, they called this a figure, and then they made a, it have a caption. So it was something like this. They did figure, and then they did this, and then they put this inside of that. And then they said there was a figure caption. Cats. And then, if you, if you can see here, there's a little emphasis on that love. We're going to emphasize, which means italicize, 
the word love, and then lasagna. Okay, did I do it correctly? This is all from memory. Let's hit save. All right, no more extra bugs. I did it. It worked. Uh, I'm going to check it out to make sure. All right, King's Catch Love. I made, a, I made a list. I made a figure. The image source, image. And then I did an alternate text, alt. I did a figure caption, cat, and then I did the emphasize. Yeah, I, I didn't miss anything. Nice. All right. This is how you get better. You start testing yourself. All right, so now H3. Um, top three things cats hate and enter and then we're gonna have an ordered list so oh no all right ol and then we're gonna do list item again li so ordered list is ol um ah uh, li l Li, and this is things they don't like. Uh, they don't like fleas. They don't like fellas. Fleas, and enter. Li. They don't like being caught. And that's not how you spell caught. A u g h t in the rain. Wasting my time on the ground. Uh, and it says here, I don't, I'm not sure to find it. I'm not sure if this is true or not. Other cats. Sure, why not? Uh, let's try to do something silly with us cats. We're gonna do, we're gonna put it in there, but we're gonna, uh, what if we do B? Cats. Bats. Sure, I don't know. I don't know what B means. I have no idea. I'm assuming it means bold. But I could be totally wrong. What is this? An element that represents a span of text to which attention is being drawn for utilitarian purposes. Alternate voice of mood. I don't know. Let's just... Uh, does it break it? I just saved it. Bats. Okay, yeah. It does bold. I knew it. Bats. Beer. Ba bats. Battlestar Galactica. Beats. Beats is what I was going for. Okay. And that's... Oh, one last thing. Is an image. Is this one clickable? Nope. Just an image. All right. Let's finish off this ordered list. And now let's do another image. We're getting our image reps in. SRC equals... Copy link. Copy link. Paste and alt. What? How would you describe these uh, f five cute little cats? Okay. End and close. All right. Now, save. Let's have a look. Yes. I'm writing these things. This is just regular HTML code. There's nothing complicated here. This is first hour beginning. If you watch one of those YouTube videos that say, learn HTML in an hour, this is like the first five, 10 minutes. And they'll rush through a bunch of these things. So, um, all right, let's go back to the tutorial. I'm caught up now. Oh, are we doing more other cats? After the element of, oh, cats hate. We're gonna do figure again. That's what they were wanting me to do. Okay, so we'll do another figure. I don't know why we're doing this, but it's a thing that it does. 
figure. Copy, paste, end, 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 that was an end. Enter, okay. And then we're gonna do figure caption. Cats are friends. Yeah, I don't like the other cats thing. I don't know, that's silly to me. So we're gonna hit save, check it out. Yep, we got caption there. So it wants me to do it over here. We have to do exactly what they say. So after that, I'm gonna do fig caption. Woo! A lot easier to write inside of BS code because it auto fills and fixes things. Cats hate. I don't like hate. Other cats forward slash fig captions. All right, check your code. Sorry, did not pass, keep on trying. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna copy this real quick. I'm gonna reload, I feel like I've been pushing buttons and doing stuff, okay. Oh, look at that. What's that S doing there? I'm 45% done with this. Let's see if we can get it for 50 today and then move on. All right, the strong element is used to indicate something. This is like bold, but I guess different. All right, the strong element used to indicate some text is of strong importance or urgent. In the fake caption, just added, indicate that hate is of strong importance. I'm gonna change, uh, I want to change it to love. But we'll do it like this. Strong. We'll do what they say. Uh-oh, I didn't do the thing, did I? If I'm gonna close out a tag, an element, I need to do it. Did it work? It worked. So I did the same thing here. Cats are friends. Strong. Are. All right, save, watch, cats are friends. Got it, Dunskis, did it. Submit, next. 33, it's time to add a new section. Add a third section element. Section. Section. Got it. All right, so I don't need these extra spaces right here. For figure, got section. Let's do a new section. All right, next. And ask me later. Uh, did it work? What happened? Inside the third section element, add an H2 element with the Cat form. Mmm. With the title, cat form. Okay. We're moving on to forms. H2. Cat form. H2. Got it. So, here we go in section three. H2. Cat form. Save, look, cat form, got it, cat form, submit next. Now you will add a web form to collect information from users after the cat form, add a form element. Well, this is, a, this is interesting, Free Code Camp is very interesting. It just says add a form element. Every time it said add something element, X element, I just do that, and then I do that, and they're like, yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. All right, so I guess if you know all the words in HTML to use, it will be pretty simple to figure out which element it is for you to use. 
All right. So that shouldn't show anything now. Um, shouldn't be any different because there's no form yet to show. All right, the action attribute, whoa, action. This is cool. So now we're gonna do things to the page, not just click on something and go away from the page. The action attribute indicates where form data should be sent. For example, the, in this form element, there's an action attribute that will submit, will send off the data to somewhere. So now that helicopter metaphor, you're not in it. You're not going with it. You're sending off something out there to somewhere else. It tells the browser that the form data should be sent to submit URL, wherever that is, far off place. Add an action attribute with the value submit cat photo to the form. Okay. I don't know how to do this. We are going to learn right now as we go. So we have form. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is this going to be inside of it? I guess it is. This is an attribute of the form. So similar to target. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, target is an attribute of the anchor. The href, where the image is from, sorry, where the link goes to is an attribute of the anchor thing. This says there's a tool, and these things say how to use it, where to use it, what to use it on. Kind of. The action attribute is going to be inside. Action. And we're going to say, when you do the form, the action is going to go, I, this is interesting, action is going to go to HTTPS forward slash, oh, sorry, colon forward slash freecatphotoapp.com forward slash submit dash cat dash photo. That's it. Okay. No, I didn't do dot com though. Free photo app dot com. My keyboard is sticky. All right. So, um, is that all we need to do? For example, and yeah, form down there is separate. So this form right here is beyond. Add an action attribute with the value. So this action attribute is right here and the value of it is this. And that's right. So this action attribute is here with an equal quotes and the value of it is inside those quotes with a little thingy at the end. A little thingy at the end. All right, let's check it. All right, it works, good. So we're gonna go back to VS Code. Action. Wow. Action, man. Um, we're gonna use this same URL because I don't know what what what's going on here, really. I'm assuming if I use a weird URL, it will just go to nowhere but I'm not sure about that. So I'm gonna hit, let's see what it looks like. There's no form yet. I hit save over here on my VS code. No form yet. I'm building up to a form. Let's get there. The input element allows several ways, allows you several ways to collect data from a web form. Like the ing elements, ah, inputs are self-closing. Don't need closing tags. Great. Nest an input element in the form element. Well, all right. I'm assuming it means to do this. Input. Boom. Dunzos. Ha! There it is. Look at that. A box.
input. I bet we can say what kind of input. Check the code. We're going to check ours. There's no submit button. I can't do anything to it. All right. Wait, now I'm seeing this page. This exact page that I'm looking at. They have right here a button. Input. No, I mean, kind of. This is input. I'm using an input thing. I bet if I could see behind this, it would say input somewhere. All right, anyway. Step 38. There are many kinds of inputs you can create using the type attribute. Type. Okay. Oh. It's just not talking about me typing like as in a type keyboard. Typewriter. Why are they called typewriters? Why are they called typing? Oh man, the etymology of the word type just hit me like a ton of bricks. Typing is maybe originally from people who were having to categorize things into different types. Let's internet this. Etymology of the word typing. Oof, I'm bad at it. I am bad at typing. Type. Symbol, emblem, Latin, typus, figure, form, kind. A blow, dent, impression, mark, effect. Now that makes more sense. See? Typos. Typos. So like the tip of a pen. An impression or a mark or a blow would be kind of like the ink arm on a typewriter hitting something. A figure in relief. Image, statue, anything wrought of metal or stone, general form, character, outline, sketch, root of tectine, to strike or beat. I bet that is the reason. And extended in 1731 to printing blocks of metal with letters. And so it's just it just means hitting. Typing also means to strike. So when you were uh, writing in the old printing presses, the machines would type, would press in ink to write with a typewriter. The early, earlier it meant to symbolize or typify, to foreshadow related to typing. See, that's kind of what I was thinking of. Symbolize, categorize. Eh, lots of things here. Way off track. All right, back on track. That was my brain break. Okay, many kinds of inputs you can create using type. So this is talking about different kinds of an attribute. You can easily create a password field, a reset button, or a control to let users select a file from their computer. Create a text field to get text input by adding the type attribute with a value. Okay. All right. From all that I've learned, it looks like this. It looks like this. All right. So here is the element. And we're going to give that element an attribute of type. And we're going to say that attribute has the value of text. Done. Check it. Yes, I was correct. Wonderful. All right. So input type equal text and we're going to do something over here because we're on BS code we can do whatever we want and they said that there are multiple kinds um, so we have text what else can we have here password let's just try it I don't know. Will it break? Will it break? Okay. 
Oh, see? Look! Look at that! It thinks this is a password. That's funny. The internet is quite simple. Huh. It doesn't submit anything. Okay. So if I have an input, I can give it an attribute. Got those. Let's go to the next one. In order to perform data to be accessed by the location specified in the action, which is up here, the action is trying to send it to there. You must give the text field a name attribute. Oh. And assign it a value to represent the data being submitted. So I'm thinking here, if I give this, I'm not even gonna read the rest of it. I'm gonna go back in a second. I'm, I want to uh, predict and think and, and test my knowledge before I read all of it. Um, name equals something like, um, so the type is text. Um, I don't know what we're doing here. We're doing with the cats. <laughs> we're doing with cats. Oh, the photos. Name is going to equal name. Let's say name. Oh, okay. So, I was totally, totally wrong. Email. Name equals email. Perfect. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I had it, I had, I mean, I was just making it up and in there too. All right, let's see what they want. Add the name with an attribute of cat photo URL. That's the attribute, all right. Name equals cat photo URL. Nope, oh, it's ULR. Okay. Add the name attribute with the cat photo URL to your text field. Sorry. All right, type text, type text, name, that's what's up. A colon, who uses colons? All right, so next to our this, we're gonna give this a name. Name, equal. Um, URL, this one, name, equal, password, name, equal, uh, username, I don't know. Okay, submit and go. All right, I'm gonna save this. Does this change anything over here? Still a, a password. What is that? Hmm. Interesting, I don't know what's going on. Step 40, placeholder text. Yay, now I can tell what's gonna happen inside of it. Cool. Placeholder, that's a big, uh, use the whole thing. Very self-explanatory. Add the placeholder text to capital URL to your input element. I'm gonna guess it's uh, somewhere after type text. Place holder equals um, cat photo URL. And we're gonna space it out. Yeah, 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 all right, cool. Place holder equals URL. And then on this one, place holder password. And, nope, not enter. Down, over, place, holder, username. 
Oh. How do I get to autofill? Down, enter. Down, enter. Save. Now we should see something. Yeah, look at that. URL, password. Da -da -da -da. Got it. We're doing it. Ba -da 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 -da. All right. To prevent a user from submitting your form when required information is missing, you need to add a required attribute to an input element. There's no need to set a value to the required attribute. Instead, just add the word required to the input element. Make sure there's a space between it and other attributes. But where would it go? Oh, just a space? We'll do it at the end. Required. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Nothing special. Yes. Um, required. Save. Does it show up differently? Nah. How about over here? Doesn't show up differently. So I bet if you didn't do it right in the end, it will be bad. Use the button element to create a clickable button. All right, hold on. I'm going to recap what we're doing here. We're making forms. And in this form, uh, I said make a form. And then the action is where I'm sending the data from the form. And then I added an input, specifically here. This is the in input. And the input, I have to say the type of data will be text. Although it looked like it could be any number of things. Can I, can I hover over this and then tell me? How many types of data? Go to definition. No definition of number type. Huh. Okay, so input type text. And then. This is what's going to be sent with the in the text information from the input, uh, saying this input is capital URL. It's going to be added to it, probably concatenated in some way. And inside of the box, I'm putting text capital URL. That's a placeholder, and it is a required question. Now we're going to use the button element. Yay! Buttons. Use the button element to create a clickable button. For example, button. Click here. Button. Creates a button with the text click here. I'll probably use the word submit. Oh, yeah. There we go. Add a button element with the text submit. Okay. The default behavior of clicking a form button without any attributes submits the form to the location specified in the action attribute. All right, so just sent it off. Interesting. Can that website even receive information? Is it a dummy site? Who knows? All right, here we go. And button sub submit button. Is that all? That is all. Nice. All right, where are we at? We're still in the form, or is this beyond the form? We're inside the form still. Button. Button type attribute has not been set. Submit. OK. I'm going to hit Save. There's a button. Remember, I made only the first one required. Oh, I can't. S Please fill out the field. It worked. Please fill out the field. Why is mine so fast? Oh, well. Let's keep going. 43. Even though you added up your button below to the text input, they appear next to each other on the page. That's because the input and buttons are in 
line elements. Oh dear. Here we go. Confusing words. Which don't appear on new lines. That means they just go on to the next on the same line as far as the line can go unless the page makes it wrap. Like this. Dynamically. Alright. So uh oh, got a sneeze. <coughs> wow. Did it. Okay, that's because they're both in line. The button you added will submit the form by default. However, relying on a default behavior may cause confusion. Add the type attribute with the value submit to the make it clear. All right. Okay. This button has a type attribute and the type is submit. I think that's all I do. Okay, it is. I guess I, I still feel like this website assumes that it's all very self-explanatory. Maybe it is. Maybe I've just thought it was so complicated all this time. Okay, that went away. Look at that. See? Ah! See? There we go. Got it. And save. So let's go to the next one. Da, 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 da. Wow, we're getting, getting along here. Step 44, you can use radio buttons. R -r -r radio, which I just assume means circle buttons. Radio, radius. Radio buttons for questions where you only, or only one answer. Oh my, sentences. You can use radio buttons for questions where you want only one answer out of multiple options. Yes, multiple choice question. Here is an example of a radio button with the option of cat. Input. Oh, so this is changing. So we had these input types earlier. Text. Where is it? Input type text. So we're going to remember the input elements are self closing. Before the text input, add a radio button with the option set as indoor. Input. Wait. Yeah, we're making a whole new input, I believe. Type equals equals radio and then And the option. Oh man. Oh dear. All right. Add a radio button with the option set as indoor. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. Is that all I need to do? And test. Sorry. The text indoor should be located directly to the right of your radio button. So, indoor. Check. Your new input element should have a type attribute with the value of radio. I'm gonna put it after, I guess. This makes no sense. It's just floating out there in the world. Ah, I don't like it. I don't know what's going on here. This doesn't make any sense to me. 
Let's go to the couple lessons and see if it explains it. Because sometimes it'll explain it. Type equal radio. And then we're going to close it. And then I'm going to put indoor. Save. I cannot undo it. Save. Oh, it's just text after it. Huh. So if I make more than one of these, what happens? Save. Does it swap back and forth? No. Nope. Doesn't undo either. Okay. So let's see it. All right. Same as you. All right. Label elements are used to associate the text for an input element with the input element itself. Okay. I might be getting deep into my brain, brain care categories here. Let's read the whole thing slowly. Label elements. Label elements. This is the new thing. This is new to me. New information. Label elements are used to help associate the text for an input element with the input element itself, especially for assistive technologies like screen readers. For example, if we label and then input, and then type radio, and then cat, and then finish the label. It makes it so that clicking the word cat also selects the corresponding radio button. Huh. Okay. Nest your radio button inside a label element. Well, okay, well, that should be pretty simple. Label and then close the label element, right? And enter. Okay. That's all we need, I guess, for that. Do it over here. Label. Okay, save. Let's try that out. Let's reload it. I want to reload. Go live. Ah, uh -huh, it worked. Interesting. Okay. Is that all it does? That label element seems very odd. The ID attribute is used to identify specific HTML elements. This feels like a very, very important element. The ID attribute. I feel like I see this attribute all the time. All right. Each ID attributes must be unique from all other ID values for the entire page. The entire page. Now, this is a specific to one element. An ID attribute, an add an ID attribute with the value in door to the radio button. Okay. Radio button, ID, ID attribute. So attributes are just inside. Um, an element and you have the attribute and then you give it a value so I'm adding an ID attribute with the value of that to the radio button which is an input um, I'm gonna put it after the type ID equals indoor OK, 
Okay, that worked. All right. I'm going to do it over here on mine. ID equals indoor. And that's all. All right, next one. Create another radio button below the first one. Nest it inside a label element with outdoor as a label text and give the radio button an ID. Wait a second, hold on. The first one nested inside a label element with outdoor as the label text. Oh, okay, well, all right. So what I'm reading here is that you could have an input and also just write indoor beside the input and that the next thing and that will be the next text will be the radio button. But if you do it inside of the label from the radio button to the end of the words, all of that becomes the clickable to clickable to make the radio button function. So we're gonna do one. Label. And um, we're going to do input. And we're gonna do so they did the ID before. ID outdoor. And then they go past it. And they're gonna go type radio. And we're gonna end it. And then nest it inside a label element with outdoor as the, this is the label text, outdoor. And then we're gonna close the label. Got it, cool. So we're gonna do a, no, a new input ID equals outdoor type and we're going to label it and we're going to give it the label name of out door. All right, we're gonna hit save. What do we got? Let's see. Indoor, outdoor. I'm gonna have slightly little letters there. Okay. All right. So submit to the challenge. We got that. Notice that both radio buttons can be selected at the same time. To make it so selecting one button automatically deselects the other, both buttons must have a name attribute with the same value. A name attribute? Have we used name before? Am I remembering something? Name, yes, we have. Input, name. Oh, the name part of an input is going to tell yes so if I had 20 radio buttons and they were all named for environment only one result will be sent for environment but I have all the 20 of those options if I had 20 of them all right so add the name attribute with the value indoor dash outdoor to both radio buttons. Okay. Uh, the best place to put it after the text, it says. After text type. Type. So we'll do it here. Name equals indoor slash dash outdoor Oh, somebody texted me. Oh, 
Hello. Firefighter. Well, I can't tell when that happened. I don't know how long ago that was. So, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. Keep on the trucking. I wish it wouldn't make my chat disappear when I, can I, can I mount it? I can. Please do that thingy. Do that thing you do. All right, so if I come over here, aha, it worked. That's just what I wanted. And I wonder if I can make my chat announce at me. I don't know. We'll keep going. All right. Um, where was I? I got that far, name, indoor, outdoor. Name. I'm just gonna copy paste it. No, I won't, I won't, I'll do it right, I'll do it right. But okay, so we got right there, name equals indoor dash outdoor. Okay, let's check it. We got it. Um, so out here, we got the ID, we got the type, and then beyond that, another attribute is going to be name equals in, in, I'm going to call it in, out. Name equals in out. All right, I've got these extra things here. I don't need. Got to get rid of those. Okay, let's hit save. What do we got over here? All right. Yep. Indoor. Oh, see, now we'll only do one. Cool. 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 Next, on the thingy, if you select the indoor radio button and submit the form, the data from the button is based on its name and value attributes. Name. And. Here's the name, here's the value. Since your radio buttons do not have a value attribute, the val form data will include indoor, outdoor equals on, which is not useful when you have multiple buttons. Add a value attribute to both buttons. For convenience, set the button's value attribute to the same value as its ID. Same value as its ID. So I can set value equals ID. Or do I need to do value equals indoor? And where will I do this? And we're back. Got a phone call. Okay. Do, 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 do. Is there a way to do hot key buttons and and uh? Oh, what am I thinking? 
in what's its face OBS. I feel like that's really like one, two, three, four somewhere, or like F two something, and it switched between scene one and scene two, and also be able to mute everything while I do it. Is that a thing? I don't know. Oh well. Okay. Pop, 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 pop. If you select the indoor radio button and submit the form, name and value, we have no value. We'll include indoor, outdoor, on, which is the name and it's on, no value. Add a value attribute. So do I just add value then? I don't know. Equal indoor. Value equal outdoor. Is that it? Is that all I do? That's it. Okay. Um, these attributes on these inputs are getting pretty long. In value equal indoor. Value equal outdoor okay so now what I'm understanding is that if on a radio submission button if I select this it will now not only say it selected it received information it will say from the value it will send over the value from this selection and the value from this selection will say indoor because I said the value is indoor. I can put whatever I want there. Let's save it and see if it's broken over here. It doesn't look broken. Except for my label's not working. Did I not label it? I didn't. Look at that. It is broken. I'm a debugger. Save. Oh, now it works. See? I can click on the letters and not just on the radios. Is there a way to make this? Oh, wow. I thought a lot of people come in. Interesting. Cool. All right. So let's keep on trucking. Step 50. How much? 69? How many hours? We're gonna we, we're close to the end. Nice. Oh, we just did this. Uh, what did we do? We did this. Value indoor. Copy. Value outdoor. Copy. Got it. Yes. 50. The field set. Woo. This is even more abstract. What does this mean? The field set element is used to group element related inputs and labels together in a web form. Field set elements are block level elements. What does that even mean? Meaning that they appear on new line. New line. That's what we need. Because this is all on one line. We need some block levels so they go down below. Get the do. Let's have a look. Nest the indoor and the outdoor radio buttons within a field set element. Don't forget to indent the radio buttons. Huh. Okay. I'm assuming. It's just going to be something like this. Field, set, and field, set. Oh, I need to do the thingy. And forward slash. That's it. Yes, that was right. So, if I come over here to my form in my BS code area, field set that space 
copy these two. I bet there's ways to do this stuff better. And I don't know if that should be like that or not. How about that? And then we're gonna let's do that, that. There we go. And there we go. There we go. Cleaning it on up. Clean it up, clean it up, and save. What happens over here? Oh, we've got a box. Not very pretty, but we've got a box. Over here too? We do. 51, the legend element acts as a caption for the content in the field set. It gives users context about when they should enter. They should enter. I guess kind of what? They should enter into the part of the form. Add a legend element with the text. Is your cat an indoor or outdoor? Meow. Above the radio buttons. Okay. I'm assuming it's in this space. We're going to add a, a legend element. I assume this just means write the word legend. Because when it says element, it's all you got to do. And then uh, we have to write is your cat an indoor or whew, outdoor cat. And then we close the legend. Is this it? That's it. That's all you got to do. Legend. Is your cat an indoor outdoor? Yep, that's right. Totally misspelled it. Yeah, I, your can, an indoor dodo. That's me not typing very well and leaving it be because it's kind of funny. All right, submit and go. 52. Next, you are going to add some new form input elements. So add another field set directly below the current field set. Field set. Okay. Let's do like this. Field set. Field. Oh. Set and check. Cool. Field set and submit. Does that mean there isn't that one there? If I do that here, does it show up over here too? It does. It's very clunky. Makalanki. Add a legend element with the text What's your cat's personality? Okay, well, I guess. Why is this a thing, legend? What's your cat's personality? Enter, check, okay. In this field set, legend. What's your cat's personality. This should be, yeah, there. Oh, oh, interesting. It takes up part of it. That is not what I expected. There we go. Huh. Submit and go to the next challenge. Forms commonly use checkboxes for questions that may have more than one answer. For example, Here's a checkbox with the option of tacos. Input type checkbox tacos. I am reading this and I'm not understanding it. Let me try again. Forms will use checkboxes. That makes sense. I've seen checkboxes on forms. They may have for questions that may have more than one answer. Okay, that makes sense. I can check off two things. So, for example, here's a checkbox with the option of tacos. That's it. 
input type equals checkbox, and then I write the word tacos. Under the legend element, you can just add, nope, no word can. Under the legend element, you just add it. Add an input with the type set, attribute set to checkbox, and give it the option of loving. What's your cat's personality? One checkbox. Okay, so we're gonna give it an input. And we're gonna give it a type. And the type will be checkbox. And we're gonna close it. And we're gonna write the word loving. And I don't get this, because I feel like there should be an end to the input like that. Is that correct? It's not, is there? Inputs don't have it. Inputs are just end. They just end. See, that is an exception that I'm glad I know, but I don't get. I don't understand it. Does this work? It works. All right, well, here we go. What's your cat's personality? We have a new input. Input. Type. Checkbox. We're gonna go to the end. Loving. We have a cat. He has a gray cat. Oh, look at that. And because of odd circumstances, while the cat was young, very young, I'll just tell it to you now. We were going to purchase a house, but we were a year away. And we were luckily, luckily, happily, helpfully staying with my wife's parents. We were young married people. We both had jobs and we saved up money for a down payment for a year. But at the beginning of that year, my wife's sister was living in a house in one dark and stormy morning. A little meowing was on the doorstep and the cat was sitting there, soaked his little kitten, a little gray kitten. And so, being a regular human who takes care of small animals and thinks they're cute, they, my sister-in-law took the cat inside, and, but they did not want the cat. They already had a cat, I believe. So they didn't want another cat, and but they agreed to keep the cat until we got a house. So... It would be our cat. But because of this, it was never really named. And so it was always Gray Cat. And it still is. It's down around today, somewhere outside. Years ago, a while ago, 10 years ago. There was once at the vet, we did give it a name that never stuck. 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 Stuck is not a word. But, so now we have Gray Cat, or we had a roommate at one point. And the roommate uh, named it two different names, Meow Meow and Mr. Meowgi, even though it is a female cat, which all those names are fine. Cat, our cat, but not be considered unloving, but I would be more to say like protectory. It's an adventurous outdoor, goes and, and uh, protects our yard from all sorts of small animals. All right, have we done the thing? I've been talking too much. Check the code. No, we did not do the thing. Step 55, add an ID attribute with the value of loving. If I remember correctly, ID comes right after the input. ID equals loving. My fingers are not on the right spot on the keyboard. There we go. Loving. Check the code. Got it. I'm getting this down. Ba -da -boop -ba -doop -bop. Now I just need to get these things to, I need to understand how they all work together to make an actual web page. That's what I'm afraid of, that I'll do all these things and kind of learn a bunch of random bits of HTML that don't really get to anything. Although I have been working with WordPress for a year now, and I'm seeing a bunch of WordPressy kind of things 
from the HTML side at this point. But I feel like they're even more CSS and JavaScript related. So I'm trying to plow through this to get to CSS and JavaScript. There's another way to associate the input element's text with the element itself. You can nest it with inside of a label element for and add a for attribute. What is this? But the same value as the input element's ID attribute. What? What? What is happening? Okay. I think I am needing to finish to be done for the day. Thank you, all the streamers out there. Good job. Way to go. Thank you for popping in. Thank you for Firefighter for talking. Um, yeah, that's it. I will uh, stop the stream. I think I did a magic button for that. And go.